The Batmobile was a customized 1955 Lincoln Futura. I took this steel body and we reformed this dual cockpit car for Adam and Bert. I wanted to incorporate the bat features into the automobile. That means that the bat was part of the car. Uh, the top of the fenders where the headlights were were the ears. The mouth was the grill. The nose was coming off the hood and it had a chain slicer that come out. It was quite exciting. We got kind of a big thrill out of it. According to Barris, there were five Batmobiles made during the 1966 to 1968 run of the Batman series. The series was rushed into production. Turning out something for everybody twice a week in color is a lot of work. Even for a man who's been involved with an impressive list of television hits, ranging from Playhouse 90 to Bewitched, from Gunsmoke to Hazel. In the sacrosanct Bat Cave, Super Bat Chief Dozier meets Bat Leader Horwitz. Dozier, I learned later from biographies that I read, was a very savvy Hollywood producer and executive who knew writers and knew from how scripts should be prepared, etc. That was his big skill. And when I got on the thing, he said, hey, don't get funny. Just remember, play it straight. And what he meant was, don't let it get cute. And uh, I didn't quite even know what he meant, but I sensed it in my own terms. And Lorenzo Semple, the writer, and I were very good friends. Maybe Lorenzo mentioned me to Dozier. Maybe I was just accruing enough credits so that I seemed a logical guy to do that. I don't know. But it was totally crazy, crazy material. The crew didn't get it. The Batcave set was built on the exact spot where the Skull Island Gate was located in the original King Kong. The scene of the Batmobile leaving the Batcave was filmed at Bronson Cavern in Hollywood Hills. Similar in style and content to the 1940s serials, Batman and Robin would arrive at the bottom of the bat poles in the Batcave in full costume. Reference is made later in the series to some sort of costuming device that functions on the way down the poles. What happened is in our street clothes we would say to the bat poles and we'd run to the library wall which sometimes didn't open and it was very painful. But we jump my pole was bigger. We jump on the bat poles and we drop about fifteen feet onto mattresses. And then who knows, maybe two weeks later, we'd film coming down the bat poles in the bat cave in costume. And it, you know, it, it'd be put together. They then jump into the Batmobile. Robin checks the gauges. After fastening their seatbelts, the two would drive out of the cave at high speed. As the Batmobile approached the mouth of the cave, a camouflage door would swing open and a hinged road barrier outside the back cave would drop down to allow the car to exit onto the road. I drove the Batmobile uh, much of the time, but in those, you know, wide establishing shots, uh, uh, Hubie Kearns uh, did that stuff for me. I had a wonderful stunt gaffer. Uh, Hubie, for example, drove the car coming out of the cave. I wasn't even there. Adam West repeatedly tried to sneak in a few jokes here and there to prove to his Malibu buddies that he knew it was crazy that what we were doing. I kept, Adam, Adam, no, Adam. I remember he closed a book once and he had put Fuller's Earth dust in it. So he closes the book and this little puff of dust. God, Adam, no. Fun battle, fun ongoing battle. We were certainly on the same page. Occasionally I thought he would intone the thing a little, he would add too much mockery, he would add beats. Once upon a time, my friends. I would try and straighten him out a little bit. So no, he didn't gag it up, but he, he arched it up. He tended to put some of the lines in stone above the courthouse because he thought that would be appropriate for Batman or Bruce Wayne with his philosophical approach on everything. So the trick was to simplify that stuff too. Not too much performance, not too much presentation. Take out all style and just let the words and the fact of what the hell we were doing, tell the tale. It was the key for the humor in the show, that offbeat humor, joking against the characters. Before going on the air, this show received the worst audience test scores in the history of ABC. It was the lowest rating they had ever had on anything. 
Now, had they not already bought the show, ABC, it would never have gone on the air. ABC initially ordered the series for the 1966-67 TV season. However, finding themselves in desperate need of programming, the network decided to add the show as a mid-season replacement in January of 1966. According to Adam West, a nervous ABC required the producers to hold test screenings of the show, one with a laugh track added, the other with additional narration. Batman broke uh, hot. Uh, it broke very big, and naturally, that's a wonderful thing to be part of. It had a 52 share of the audience, which is unheard of. There was no question about it. It was the biggest immediate hit that had ever hit television. In all the scenes of the villains, hideouts, the camera filmed at an angle or crooked. This shot is known as an oblique or Dutch angle. This was because all the villains were also crooked and it gives a sense of something being wrong in the scene or shot. The props used in this show, such as the computers and guns, also were used in Lost in Space, the Time Tunnel, Man of the Giants, and Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Whenever Robin encountered something startling, he would use catchphrases like Holy Agility to Holy Zorro. A total of 352 holy words were used on the show. Yes, the holies had to be fresh, always. And as a matter of fact, Bert, I took on the challenge of always trying to polish the holies a bit, maybe something different from what was written that we felt was more appropriate. It was almost a, a hobby with Bert to somehow find the holy that was appropriate for the moment. Like many of the things in the show, um, they were written, but we had the opportunity to improvise, and that happened after the first show. In the first season, Bert Ward was paid only 350 per week. No origin story was shown as Batman and Robin were portrayed as established crime fighters from the start of the series. The pilot and a couple of other early episodes made references to Batman's origin story, though never to that of Robin. In many episodes, Batman and Robin must get to a high point of a building or other structure. They do this via the bat rope, which is thrown and anchored above the high point, which Batman and Robin climb by walking up the side of the structure with the aid of the rope. The climbing sequences were filmed by rotating the camera 90 degrees and building a set for the side of the structure along the studio floor. The hero's capes were pulled back to replicate the pull of gravity with invisible lines. During the run of the show, Batman was one of the most popular shows on TV. And if you were a big name in Hollywood during the 60s, you appeared on the show, even if you didn't do television. The scenes where Batman and Robin were climbing the wall of the building would feature cameos of famous celebrities popping their heads out of the windows to exchange a few words with the dynamic duo. Frank Sinatra, Natalie Wood and Cary Grant were all fans of the show and wanted to be on it, but the producers were never able to come up with the right roles for any of them. 84 different word overlays were used during the fight scenes, from BAM to KAPOW. During the show's first season run, it was decided to do an official Batman movie with the same actors reprising their roles. Batman the movie was released in 1966. It was released by 20th Century Fox. The film, of course, starred Adam West as Batman and Burt Ward as Robin. The film hit theaters two months after the last episode of the first season of the television series. The film includes most members of the original TV cast, with the exception of Lee Merriweather as Catwoman, the character previously played by Julie Newmar. Newmar, however, returned as Catwoman in season two of the series. Do us some meow. Oh, you want some meow? Yeah, uh -huh. Let's see, do you want uh, uh, ecstasy meow? All right. <laughs> You'll see that when I'm uh, flying on a jet 
umbrella. I that, that's the jet that's umbrella, a jet. ecstasy, meow. <laughs> <laughs> How did you learn all of those? I assume somebody else did them. No, no. As a matter of fact, I, I had to even loop my own meows because of sound difficulties and everything. They didn't get them, and I came in for a whole day of looping just the meow. Others who appeared in the movie were Cesar Romero as the Joker, Frank Gorson as the Riddler, and Burgess Meredith as the Penguin. The film was originally intended to be produced before the series as a way to introduce the series to the public. However, the series premiere was moved up and the filming was forced to wait until the summer hiatus after the first season. The film was produced quickly to get into theatres prior to the start of season 2 of the television series. The film did not initially perform well at the cinema. Batman premiered at the Paramount Theatre in Austin, Texas on July the 30th, 1966, between the first and second seasons of the series. It was moderately successful at the box office. The movie was made to help sell the series overseas, but the show's success in America was sufficient. William Dozier wanted to make a big screen film to generate interest in the proposed Batman TV series by having the feature in theatres while the first season of the series was rolling before the cameras. The studio 20th Century Fox refused because it would have to cover the entire cost of a movie while it would only have to share the cost of a TV series. A much less risky proposition. The film was shot after season one was filmed. The movie's budget allowed for producers to build the bat boat, at least a helicopter that would be made into the Batcopter, both of which were used in the second and third seasons of the television show. Besides the Batmobile, other vehicles were used by the dynamic duo, which included the Bat Cycle. The movie kept the same camp humor of the TV series and introduced Batman to Cold War issues and taking a poke at the Pentagon. This marked Batman's first attempts to poke fun at domestic and international politics. The fun of the TV series is kept intact in the movie and it makes for a fun, entertaining and hilarious thrill ride. Critics today claim Batman the movie elevates camp to an art form and has a blast doing it every gloriously tongue-in-cheek inch of the way. A follow-up of the film was at one point considered. The film would have been released between seasons 2 and 3 and would have been used to introduce Barbara Gordon, Batgirl and make use of a bat plane due to waning interest in the series during season two which resulted in budget cuts plans for a second film were scratched adam west was initially reluctant about making the movie he decided to do it when told by producers that without his involvement in the film the part of batman bruce wayne would be recast the promotional poster features batman involved in a different costume from the tv series with black mask, cape, gloves, boots, and outerwear briefs, but red tights instead of grey. This is not an error, but a tribute to the original costume designed by Bob Kane to create Batman. Later, it was revised by cartoonist Bill Finger, who changed the colour of the tights from red to grey, giving him his definitive appearance for its first issue in Detective Comics dated in May of 1939. In season two, Semple's participation in the series decreased in the second season. In his autobiography, Back to the Batcave, Adam West explained that when work on the second season commenced, following the completion of the feature film, Dozier, his immediate deputy, Howie Horwitz, and the rest of the cast and crew rushed their preparation, thus failed to give themselves enough time to determine what they wanted to do with the series. Burt Ward has stated that he was badly injured several times while filming the show. He asserts that on numerous occasions he was burned and or struck by shrapnel. Burt Ward often complained about personal safety issues as he was often located near explosive effects and other pyrotechnics. In at least one other memorable incident, he was flung out of the Batmobile after his door flew open during a high-speed turn. Ward also claimed that the flash from one onset explosion almost left him permanently blind.
blinded. Producers downplayed Ward's injury claims, feeling he was immature and saying he would milk any injuries he suffered during the making of the series. Producers also believed that Ward's concerns about any damage to his body, particularly his face, were connected more to personal vanity rather than personal safety. One day I had to have pelt Robin with several eggs and the camera crew came up to me and said, not two, a dozen. And I said, why, don't you like Bird? And they said, we like Bird all right, but Bird likes himself more than we like him. It was really fun. Batman was the first thing that Bird ever did. Naturally, Bird had a lot of insecurities, which made him a pain in the beep, but many times. But there were so many times that you understood it, you understood why, you have the patience for it. And Bert grew, he developed, he mellowed. During the run of the series, this show crossed over with the Green Hornet. The Green Hornet, Van Williams and Cato, Bruce Lee, teamed up with the dynamic duo in the episodes a Piece of the Action and Batman Satisfaction, which aired on March the 1st and the 2nd of 1967. And they also did a window cameo in Season 2. Batman creator Bob Kane noted that this series saved the Batman comic series from cancellation. Despite this, most comic fans despised this series for stereotyping superheroes and comics as campy nonsense. Soon after the show was cancelled, the character's comic series took on a dark and deadly serious tone that was reminiscent of the original comics in the late 1930s. Several cast members recorded music tied into the series. Adam West released a single titled Miranda, a country-tinged pop song that he actually performed in costume during live appearances in the 60s. Frank Gorson released a song titled The Riddler, which was composed and arranged by Mel Torm. Bert Ward recorded a song called Boy Wonder I Love You, written and arranged by Frank Zappa. In 1966, Batman the exclusive original soundtrack album was released on LP, featuring music by Nelson Riddell. The Batman theme was included. By the third season, ratings were falling and the future of the series seemed uncertain. To attract new viewers, Dozier opted to introduce a female character. He came up with the idea of using Batgirl, who in her civilian identity would be Commissioner Gordon's daughter, Barbara, and asked the editor of the Batman comics to further develop the character who made her debut in a 1966 issue of Detective Comics. To convince ABC executives to introduce Batgirl as a regular on the show, a promotional short featured Yvonne Craig as Batgirl and Tim Herbert as Killer Moth. And I tell you what, when I, when I did the series, I was specifically trying to have a name connected with a face because people would say, I did a lot of episodic TV, and people would say, oh, that's, um, uh, you know, you see her all the time. And so I thought, that's what it's going to do. If I do this, this role, then people will say, oh, yeah, that's Yvonne Craig, and she plays that girl. So there was a little girl in a supermarket, just about your age, and she walked up to me and said, I know who you are. You're that girl, aren't you? And I said, yes. And she said, but I know who you really are. And I thought, here it comes. And she said, Barbara Gordon. <laughs> Yvonne Craig has stated that she briefly did have a stunt double, but did most of her stunts. She actually operated the Batgirl cycle herself as well. She was an accomplished biker at the time and actually owned a bike. The show was reduced to once a week with mostly self-contained episodes. During season three, each episode ended with a teaser featuring the next episode's villain. Accordingly, the narrator's cliffhanger phrases were mostly eliminated. Most episodes ending with him encouraging viewers to watch next week. It was really no time for us to play with the characters and play with the scene and create the kind of excitement and spontaneous uh, craziness that made our show successful. So I, I would say that it was the financial reasons that really restrained our creativity, which ultimately reduced our ratings. It was a very expensive show to do. The sets were expensive. The special effects were expensive. The cost was killing us. At the end of season three, ABC planned to cut the budget by eliminating Chief O'Hara and Robin. Batgirl would then become Batman's full-time partner. Both William Dozier 
and Adam West were opposed to the idea. ABC cancelled the show. It was the network decision to cancel the series because it wasn't delivering a big enough audience of the right kind. It wasn't delivering enough adults who buy things. But NBC was keen to pick up the series and take over and continue its run. Unfortunately, before that could happen, it was discovered that someone had destroyed the Batman sets, which cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to build, and the deal with NBC was lost. The show aired from January the 12th, 1966 to March the 14th, 1968 on ABC, and went for 120 episodes. Principally, Batman was a crime series, but the show was actually very campy and tongue-in-cheek, and a situation comedy. The show worked mainly due to Adam West's serious and straight delivery of his lines in hilarious, somewhat silly, absurd moments. The situations were often exaggerated and were played for laughs. Burt Ward often was very over the top in his delivery of the dialogue of Robin, but it worked. Adam West stated that when he first read the script, it made him laugh, and that's why he took on the role of Batman. We played it for laughs. But in order to play it for laughs, you know, you just had to pull on that cowl and believe that nobody would recognize you. And I got to the point where I'd pull on the cowl that would trigger the whole character. My approach was uh, very childlike with it. To get to the point that when playing Batman, it was like when you were a kid again, playing Batman. Only now, there were those sometimes subtle references and in-jokes and ironies. When reading a script, it was easy to see or realize that it had to be played with earnestness, with sincerity, but with a layer of sincerity that's bigger than life. The series focused on the adventures of Batman and Robin, although the lives of their alter egos, millionaire Bruce Wayne and his ward, Dick Grayson, were frequently shown. It was usually only briefly the show relied on using the same formula, so that the audience quickly came to expect a series of familiar set pieces. A phone call from the police asking for Batman's help, a dash to the Batcave, a race in the Batmobile to police headquarters, a conference in the commissioner's office examining clues in the crime lab at the Batcave, rushing to the villain's secret hideout, falling into the pre-arranged trap leading to a cliffhanger ending which was usually resolved in the first few minutes of the next episode. Despite the regular fighting on the show, Batman and Robin usually use non-lethal force and methods in apprehending the villains. The title sequence features animated versions of Batman and Robin, drawn in the then-current style of the comic books. Running towards camera and then fighting an assortment of villains, Batman would always reveal one of his many crime-fighting gadgets which were usually given a ridiculous sounding name that somehow incorporated the word bat, often simply by adding the word bat, such as shark repellent, bat spray, bat computer, most of Batman's items in the Batcave, bat vehicles, and on the utility belt were given simplistic block letter labels, even though Batman, Robin and Alfred are the only people who used the equipment and clearly knew what the items were. Kids loved the show because it was always colourful, fun and fast paced, with the bad guys always having their plan foiled and Batman capturing them at the end of the usual double episodes. Batman would always win. Adam West was a rock star wherever he went. He embraced the role of Batman even though many times he felt like he was typecast in the role forever. Adam West was making appearances as Batman long after the end of the TV series. People loved him and knew him everywhere. The typecasting's an enormous challenge. And I think that uh, I had probably one of the biggest with Batman because it was a costume character. And so, so much a part of the American uh, psyche, uh, pop culture, that it was tough to get away from it. It would be difficult for me to have anticipated or even to have predicted where my career would have gone had I not done Batman. I know that there was a lot of interest in me doing James Bond. I thought it should be an Englishman. There was interest in me doing a number of things, but it never quite gelled 
for one reason or another. I know that my spaghetti western, the western I did overseas, was successful. I know what I could have done. You see, it's all a matter of timing and the breaks and how the character, whatever it is that you do, how it's accepted by the audience. I never even think about that. I guess I did from moment to moment years ago, but I never think about that. My attitude now is how many actors get the chance to create a signature role? Not many. Something that'll go on after, you know, they're gone, and each succeeding generation loves. That's a wonderful thing. Adam West has left a great legacy behind. Even with the string of different gritty, serious incarnations of Batman by actors like Christian Bale and Ben Affleck, he's still the best. And when you mention Batman, people always think of Adam West. The show still draws and introduces a whole new generation of fans to the universe of Batman. The sheer magnitude of how much the show has impacted us and the world is just mind-blowing. My name's Jonathan Bark. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more exciting videos on my channel.